dear students welcome to vto e shikshana program you all know me i was taking lecture sessions under vto e shikshana program for industrial pneumatics areas and i have covered many sessions theoretically i feel uh, without a laboratory session uh, this subject is difficult to understand and uh, the experience of learning this through laboratories is something different so uh, to give you that exposure today we have planned certain experiments which are to be conducted using laboratory and we will rig up many circuits today which are related to what i have covered in the theoretical sessions and you can watch the videos of this and learn through that and relate that to theory, theoretical uh, classes that we have taken and if you want more you can just take up certain training programs as the nep is uh, there now such skills enables you to have uh, credited internship possibilities and you can take uh, that and you can be industry ready before you go join to a, join any industry Uh, in this laboratory it is a wonderful lab with uh, five kits pneumatic kits and also it can be fitted with electro pneumatic uh, components to conduct electro pneumatic circuits and the laboratory also has servo pneumatic kits that means the laboratory is very well equipped to have any kind of experiment carried in this lab for an engineer to learn or for a participant to learn an interested candidate to learn so uh, i request all the students of the vtu colleges to come here stay some time here and learn mysore is wonderful city it is a palace city having many places here to see morning sessions you can work for with along with theory sessions and laboratory sessions and conduct your experiments and then you can also learn your projects and then in the evening you can enjoy uh, roaming here and there in mysore so mysore is being a very good sightseeing place and in the mysore we have a vtu bosch center located exclusively to train faculty students in the area of engineering areas whether it is electrical electronics or mechanical so you can learn lot here today i am showing one such laboratory which is meant for learning pneumatics and electro pneumatics i'll be giving you a list of experiments which are to be conducted for the day which starts from direct control and indirect control and then to have flow control that uh, changes the speed of the cylinders and then to logical elements and then sequential circuits finally to a electro pneumatic circuits so starting from basic to an electro pneumatic circuit level i'll rig up certain circuits and i'll show you the experiments on the bench practically to you in today's laboratory session as i told you Uh, in vtu bosch resource center at uh, regional office we have a test benches or the kits uh, through which we can conduct any kind of experiments in the pneumatics area and in servo pneumatics areas so here we are going to connect all the components on the kits we can pick any component and mount it on to the uh, test bench and then connect these uh, components through a polyurethane tubes Uh, based on the dimensions uh, po4 po6 po8 pipes will be available in the market standard pipes and we use that pipes to connect these uh, components together and all of them will be connected to a, a a source that is here in this case source is a compressed air so when i say compressed air the air from the atmosphere is sucked in and it will be pressurized in this case we use a reciprocating compressor which is a small compressor hermetically sealed type of compressor 
which is a reciprocating type. If you observe this kit now, this is a compressor. Compressor has many components. This is the suction filter through which the air will be sucked in. And once this is sucked, there is a reciprocating cylinder and a piston arrangement here inside, which runs by a motor, hermetical motor. So, as it rotates, the cylinder will make a to and fro motion inside and it starts uh, sucking the air and compressing it and sending it to the receiver part. So, as the air is pushed to the receiver, the pressure in the reservoir will increase or in the storage unit will increase. So, reciprocating compressors is a positive displacement compressor. It keeps on pumping the air. So, it is dangerous. So, in order to protect the device and to create a safety to this, we fix up a one pressure switch. So, this is the pressure switch. So, uh, in which if you open this pressure safe, uh, switch, there will be a two springs. You can adjust the tension of these two springs to adjust the cut in and cut out pressures of this type of compressors. If I say cut in, means the starting. So, the compressor can be made to start at 2 bar and it can stop at 4 to 5 bar as per your requirement. So, that adjustment is done through a spring which is kept in, inside this and which in turn connected to an electrical contact element and at that particular pressures, the switching action will happen automatically. This is an automatic uh, pressure enabled controller switch. Okay. So, uh, once if you have done that much, whatever the setting cutoff pressure is there, at, at that pressure, the compressor stops automatically. And as you use the air, if the pressure dips down, it switches on at the cutting pressure. So, that, that is 2 and 5. So, 2 bar and 5 bar. However, these kinds of pressure uh, compressors can be uh, used up to 8 bar pressure. Normally, here in our lab, we use a 5 to 6 bar. Uh, in general practice in the industry, it can be set at 7 or 6.5 or 7 as the compressor can go up to 8 bar pressure. So, from here, now the air will come to uh, this line. Okay. Once the air is ent enters this line, we put a different kinds of fittings. So, this is a T, T fitting which we have used and we connect this. So, one input, two output means we can take a two output from a single input here. So, one of the input is taken to a uh, regulator, regula filter and regulator unit. So, normally the compressed air has to be filtered before it sends to the component side. So, these are the components. Before sending into these components, we have to send a quality air. So, which is free from dust particles. So, for which we will be passing the air through this uh, filter regulator unit. If you observe now, compressor is running. So, you have a small noise that you can hear, a ringing kind of noise, small uh, that is the reciprocating motion that is happening within the cylinder. And the air has come to this dial part. So, if you observe here now, the dial is reading around 4 bar pressure. So, if I lift this, so I can set this. Observe this now, you can see the dial is varying, the dial is varying. You can see this clearly as you turn this knob, the pressure is being reduced. Okay. So, I can adjust this between any pressure from 0 to the required pressure whatever set for as a maximum. So, now I will turn uh, other side, you can see that on the dial the pressure is increasing, the pressure is increasing. You can see this clearly, the dial shows an increase in pressure and when it reaches a maximum, you can lock this. After locking this, you need not touch this part again and again, it will give uh, the set pressure maybe 4 or 5 whatever you have set. So, now what is that you need to do is, from the output line, you have to connect a PU tube to the distributor. 
distributor means one input multiple output. So, we have a one input here and six output is possible through this distributor unit. So, now this up to here it is a common uh, components that every circuits need. However, from here we are going to use the particular component for a particular experiment. As I told you earlier, in the beginning when we started circuit part in the pneumatics, we have covered direct control of pneumatic cylinders. So, in the direct control I have said here the actuator will be controlled directly by an input element. This is the circuit which is uh, uh, this part, this is the separate and this one is the left side is the. After closing this, you have to take a PU tube in the outlet side of the FR unit and connect the output to the uh, distributor. The distributor means one input and multiple outputs. You can get the multiple output. Here, six outputs can be obtained with a single input. So, uh, for the experiment now, I will connect the outlet of the FR unit to the distributor and take one of the input line and take this input to, to a switch that is uh, 3 by 2 way push button type of switch. So, if you observe this now, this is a push button, push button type. So, if you uh, see the symbol here, it is a 3 ports are there and 2 positions are there. So, every time on every component you can find these kinds of symbol. If you are good with the symbol, you can understand what is the type of the component which is mounted on the test kit. And I have taken the input from the distributor to one, there is a symbol written one and two here. I will take it to the one, so that is an input connection and from the output, I will take it to the single acting cylinder. So, pneumatic single acting cylinder, when I say single acting, uh, it will have a spring inside and the return will happen through the spring force. So, now if I press this input element, so the cylinder is going to move forward and if I take out this, the cylinder is uh, retracted. So, we will observe that now, you can see the operation clearly, when I press this, when I press this, I get forward. If I take out my hand, the spring pushes that back, so I get return stroke of the cylinder. So, why we say direct control here in this case is, there is no any control element in, in between the final control element and the input element. Hence, we call these kinds of circuit as direct control circuits. So, here we are working to move a pneumatic cylinder forward and reverse without having any elements in the middle. So, this circuits hence we refer to as direct control and you can see the operation of this type of circuits clearly on the board. Now, I will move on to the next e experiment that we have done when we were doing discussing about the pneumatics. So, that, that is uh, indirect control. When I say indirect control, here we have uh, a, an element in the middle, input element, final control element and in between we have a one more element that is your control element. So, there are one, two, three, three layers here, here one and two direct. So, this is the difference between the direct and indirect. So, similar to the previous experiment now, up to here already we have done it, we have set the pressure. Uh, to the 4 bar or 5 bar and the output is taken to the distributor and then the input to the components from the distributor is taken here. So, I am taking this input to the uh, 3 by 2 way normally closed type of input element, input push button type element here. This is one, the distributor from distributor to one port number 1 of this input element and port number 2 that is output line. Output line will go to a, a as a control signal to the control element. So, this is the difference. 
see this this second line output of the input uh, element will go to the control element as a signal as a signal this is most important also we need to connect the source to this control element that is from the distributor we take one input and connect this input to the control element already we had given the given the supply through this but that supply is going to connect to the system to the next stage only when i when i give a signal from this input element so then the input element will give a signal to this control element and the control valve will change according to the signal and your output uh, air will move to the actuator so observe now if i press this i am passing a signal to this control element and this is going to move forward you can clearly see that in this indirect control we are passing on a signal to the control element which in turn work based on the signal given to it and subsequently send the output here to the corresponding ports of the actuator so this is important hence we say this is an indirect control means we are giving signal to an another component and through which we are taking an output so this becomes an indirect control i'll repeat once again if you observe this now uh, the air is taken to the distributor and from the distributor i'll take one input line that is air air will be connected to the input element that is port number 1 of this uh, input element input element in this case is a 3 by 2 normally closed type of push button type of valve okay and uh, input of we had given here to the one and the output of which will be taken this is the second line which i am shaking here to show you better okay and this will be connected to the pilot ports of the control element here control valve here so this goes as a signal control signal to this valve this is a signaling part so here one more source line has to be connected to the control element that is air from the distributor is to be given to the control element however that will not move forward unless and until you give a signal through this pilot port as a control signal once the control signal is given to here the air which is connected will connect through this line and goes to the actuator that means in between we have a one more element to which we are giving a signaling air through a pilot port to this valve so hence we refer this kind of circuit as indirect circuits so i hope you have understood clearly between the difference between the direct and indirect control of cylinders in the direct control we do not have any control element in the indirect we have a control element in the middle and Uh, we will pass the signal to the control element and then take the output if you remember after completing direct control and indirect control during our lecture sessions i have also said something on speed control of cylinders when we say speed control uh, the cylinder will be moving like this it can move fast in some applications we need to move this very slowly how do we do this kinds of thing so this was the discussion we have made and for such a particular circuit i'll be explaining the necessary components required and if you observe now the air compressor will be there we have a fr unit and in the fr unit we will check with the pressure four or five bar we need to have to conduct the experiment and output of the fr unit is taken to a distributor similar to the previous experiment and the distributor has one input six out output as i said in the previous experiment now i'll take three lines that is three inputs to the subsequent components from this distributor i'll take one input to the uh, 3 by 2 way normally closed type of 
push button type of input element that is a valve and the another one input input to the second second input element again the same element I am taking it as a second element here. So, uh, 3 by 2 a push button type of element. So, I connect the input air to one of this port and one of the this valve. And now again I will take the output of this, output of this and output of this. If you observe the output of this is gone to the one side of the uh, memory valve and this, uh, this signal is coming to the other side of the memory valve. When I say memory valve, I was telling you a set reset type of valve. This type of valve is referred to as a memory valve. There are uh, two set reset connection to such valves. So, now also I will take one more input from the distributor to the control valve here. The control valve is now memory valve give source to that to the one uh, number one that is port number one of this valve and then the output of this valve the output of this valve is two and four that is two four two is taken to the one flow control valve this we call it as a flow control valve and the four the other line is taken to an another flow control valve here and these two are connected to the actuator, double acting actuator which is having a 100 mm stroke length. When I say double acting cylinder, there won't be any spring inside. So, air will act on either side to move this forward and reverse. So, this is your uh, air will go here and this gets connected to the vent and you can get a forward. In the next sequence, if I pass a pressurized air here, this gets connected to the van and you can get the retract motion. So, forward, forward and retract motions are being executed by changing the air supply to this and this line. So, now I will show you the circuit operating and I will also adjust these flow control valves so that you can see the variation of the uh, piston. Uh, speed. So, this is important factor you have to know how do we control the speed. Speed can be adjusted by varying the flow. This I have many times I have repeatedly told this concept. Whenever you want to change the speeds in the motion, you need to adjust the flow. So, to adjust the flow we have a particular valve called flow control valve and that valve have to be brought close to the cylinders in the circuit part. I will repeat now how the connection has been taken. We have taken three input lines from the distributor and one input is given to the input element 1 that is 3 by 2 a normally closed type of push button valve and the second one we have taken to the second input element that is we can say forward and retract input elements. So, we have taken to the port number 1 of this valve, input element valve and now the output of this is taken to the memory valve that is set and reset ports of the memory valve, 12 and 14 of the memory valve. So, now the memory valve has to be provided with the source. So, I am taking the third input line to port number 1 of this valve and here output of this valve is 2 and 4. 2 and 4 is this line, these lines, okay, this is the line. So, to the 2 and 4, we are incorporating a flow control valve. So, that means output lines of the control valve are being incorporated with a flow control valve. So, which enables the control of flow to the actuator. So, once if you do that, the flow gets reduced speeds can be changed according to your requirement. After building your circuit like this, open this valve and then you can press this, you can see this, this is now move forward, I have taken my hand back. To retract this cylinder back, 
So, already the air is given as a signal to this side now. And now, if you give a signal to the other side, that is this side, this side. So, then as it is a memory wall, it wipes out this memory and takes this as a signal and gives a air to this side and retracts. So, observe this now, you can just press this to retract and you can repeat this, press this to forward, it will keep that signal in memory and the cylinder will be in forward stroke and remain in forward stroke till you press the second input element for the retraction. So, repeatedly you can take forward and retraction as per your application requirement. However, if you want to reduce the speeds of this cylinder now, you can start turning this knob, full speed is this. Now, if you want to reduce the speed, I will just show you the other, other method of I am turning this every time to set my speed for the forward stroke. See, it is slow compared to the previous one. Now, see, slow. So, you can get the slow motion and if you want to adjust the speed control for the retraction, you have to adjust this valve. If you want to adjust the speed for the forward stroke, you have to adjust this valve. Now, observe, I will do it for the reverse case. So, now it is fast. I will turn this now, I will take forward, now retraction speed is slow, speed is slow. So, according to your requirements, either you can make the forward stroke slow or return stroke slow based on your application requirements. However, we can also execute a meter in control and meter out control with the same kinds of setups in the pneumatics. I have explained you what is meter in and what is meter out. In the meter in, we are trying to control the air which is going to the cylinder. Means, if I turn this knob, I am controlling the air flow into the cylinder. So, if you keep this completely open, then that is meter in for the forward stroke. So, now for the reverse stroke, if you say control this and keep open this completely, then you can say meter out. So, meter in, meter out circuits can also be uh, shown with the same setup in the pneumatic circuit parts. So, uh, this circuit will tell you about what is meter in, what is meter out. Meter in means I'm, I, I should control the air flow into the cylinder. Uh, at that time, exhaust air is completely given free to move to the vent. So, in the meter out, case we are controlling the uh, outlet air that is I can control this knob allowing this air completely in and control this knob. At that point of time I am allowing the air which is going to the vent and making it slow controlled flow. So, again the cylinder will move slow because of the meter out condition that we have created. So, we can fix up meter in meter out depending upon the control of these two valves. During the lecture sessions, initially I have started with direct and indirect and then I have showed a speed control of cylinders, then meter in and meter out circuits using speed control valves, that is flow control valves. And then we have moved to a, a second level where we have used some of the logical elements. When we say logical elements, I have showed you uh, R logical valves, and logical valves, and uh, not logical valves. All these valves I have showed symbolic representation and have incorporated those valves in different circuits and explained how the applications can be built using these logical valves. Now, I am going to show one by one the application of or logical valve and and logic valve. To begin with, I am showing you uh, the or logic operation. As I told you in the or logic, what is the advantage of or logic is, suppose if a fan is there, for the fan we keep two controls, one on the close to the bed position 
and one near the door position. Why we are keeping this way? To facilitate switching on and off when you are sleeping on the bed. So, and the second one near the door, that is when you want to go out of the room, you can be able to control switch off and switch on the fan. So, the logical valves in total will help you to create a better control of the system and also sometimes safety of the systems. So, now I am showing you the R control operation here. I have explained your R valve. So, the R valve is shown here, this is the R valve. So, symbolically the, the, this will be shown like this. Take uh, uh, the supply from the FR unit to the distributor unit. So, distributor has again 6 outputs. So, I can take 6 lines. So, this is the FRL unit, uh, FR unit in this case. So, if you turn this knob, air will enter the distributor and we will take 3 lines, 3 inputs to the subsequent components. In our case, the layer 1's components are input elements. So, input element here we are taking one for the forward and one for the retraction. So, uh, the input element is a push button type of 3 by 2 a normally closed valves. These two are 3 by 2 normally closed valves. One we have taken for forward and one we have taken for the reverse. In the layer 2, I call this as a layer 1 now. This is a layer 1. And in the layer 2, uh, in this area, we incorporate the control elements. So, in this experiment, I am incorporating a R valve here. So, R valve means logically, I am connecting one to this. The output of this is taken to the R valve one side. And from reverse also, I take the, uh, from the other input element also, I take the connection to the other side. That means, I can make use of this or this inputs to give a signal to the, uh, give the signal to the 5 by 2 a single piloted valve, single piloted valve. Why I call this a single piloted is this side, if you open this, you will have a spring and only the one signal is allowed. So, that means we are going to give one signal to reset automatically when we take the spring will take the action and resets the application. So, now observe this, this is the line which we have taken to the R valve on either side and two inputs, one output and that output we are taking to the 5 by 2 a single piloted valve. So, and the from there after giving the signal to this, the outputs of this is connected or sent connected to the cylinder that is our port number 2 and 4 in 5 by 2 way valve is connected to the cylinder. So, which is a double acting cylinder again with 100 mm stroke length. Now, what has to happen? R means I should be able to operate this through a, a, a one signal, choice signal either right side input or left side input. Whatever you want, you can select and give the input through one of this. So, now let me show you one. I will open this and I will give this. See this? I am giving signal through this. I am able to operate this cylinder. Suppose if you do not want to give signal through this, you can take the second input element. Even if you press this, then you get an output. That means, this or this, this or this, any one of this is being pressed, you get an output. Or sometimes, if you press both, then also you should get the output. Logically, if you draw a truth table, draw a truth table. So, you can see that 0, 1, 1, again 1, 0 is 1 and 1, 1 is also 1. So, taking into the consideration, so this is the first, if you do not want this, you can use the other one, call this as A, this as B. 
now press a you get a output or you press b you get a output you press both a and b both a and b then also you get an output so that means if as per the truth table you are getting the output here so this is very important in logical valves you have to understand the truth table configuration and after rigging your experiment is it operating as per the logical operation that is supposed to work so exactly it is working see this first operation or you can make use of this or you can take both the signals to operate this so now one important thing is or logical valves are a requirement to create an or logics in the pneumatic circuits which will help you to give input from any one of the input elements which you have selected uh, this is used in applications like a, a long machineries say roller machines you have to operate from this end or from that end you should be able to start and stop from this end or start and stop from that end otherwise sometimes some small accidents can convert as a bigger accident if you are not having this kinds of features so in industry for safety also we use a logical element uh, 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 examples textile rolling operations we create a r logic because if someone is inserting something if his finger goes inside we should be able to stop immediately otherwise the complete rollers can pull pull the person inside the rollers it is very hazardous so logics will help us in creating uh, better performance to the circuits and also safety to the circuits now i'll move on to the next experiment where i use unlogical valve in the same test trick i have created the second circuit take this half section now this is i have created for a r and this is for and valve operation so from here to here is the and operation circuit that i have rigged so here again similar to this i have taken three more connection from the distributor from the distributor and one input to this valve and the another input to this valve that is to the port number 1 of the input element the input element here is I, I am repeating this 3 by 2 way push button type of normally closed valves so this is the push button which is given to such valves if you press this the input gets connected to the output so from here port number 2 of this and port number of 2 of this i am taking it to the see observe this i am taking it to the and valve so this is an and valve which is fixed in the layer 2 this we call it as layer 1 and in the layer 2 we have fitted a and valve we have taken connection from this input element one in and from this one and one output so input input and this is an output of this valve for a and logic the output should be like this if i if you remember if you press one you should not get an output if you press both these valves then you should get an output now we will see whether what we have rigged is right or wrong i'm pressing the only one button see you don't get the output i will press this now also you are not getting the output to get an output what you have to do you have to press both the input element so that means you have to make one one so if i press both now observe this if i press this both then you get an output if you release it will retract i'll repeat press both you get an output i am pressing the both you are getting an output suppose if you press one no you press this or this if you press single input element you never get an output logically if you take this to the truth table in the and logic truth table we have clearly said one one consider this as a and b so what is and a also you should be logically high 
and B also should be logically high. Then only your output will become high. So, logically I take A and logically I take B. Now, both are given as signals, then I get an output. So, with this circuit, I will relate this importance of this circuit to one of the application now. In the classroom also I have told, most of the heavy presses are given this kinds of logic, and logic. What they normally do is, operator has to press two input elements which are kept at a distance, that is two buttons. So, at a particular distance, so if he presses both, then the press will come down. If he presses one, it will not come down. Why they had given like that? That is, suppose in the shaft floors, unknowingly some person comes and puts his hand on single button. If the people working on the machine tool, if they are fixing the fixtures, the press will come down automatically if you press this single. So, that is hazardous. So, if you make that kind of logical circuits without an unlogic, unknowingly somebody comes and touches his hand or touches his body to that switch. The other guy who is working on the fixture, who is fixing the fixtures will die because automatically the press can come down and hit his head or the body portion when he is bended onto the machine tools. So, in order to create a safety, almost all the presses it is mandatory to create an unlogic, means operator has to press both. So, that means in any case, we are avoiding the hazard of unknowingly or some, sometimes unknowingly pressing single button can create a problem. So, we are avoiding that kind of condition. So, it is intentionally the operator takes his both hand and presses like this. So, that means 100 percent safety is given to the machine tool. So, no hazards can happen in such cases. So, to create a, such logic, we use AND and R operation. To give you a clarity, I will also give one conventional example to you, to R and AND. Suppose, if a husband and wife are good, they have a good relation, they, if they have a good money in the bank, any one of them can take the money by a single signature, that is an R logic. And in N logic, you have a 1 crore rupee in the bank and both are not having faith among each other. So, then we create a double signature, means husband also sign and wife also sign. In the companies also, this, this kinds of logics is being implemented. President of the company or the CEO of the company signs along with the manager of the department or the purchase department head. So, means two signatures are there. Both signatures, if it is there, the bank guy will give the money. So, unlogic. Unlogic or logic are being extensively used in common life also, also in the industry. So, this may be for the safety or for the convenience. So, I, I hope you have clearly understood. Now, we will show you the wall here, very close uh, view of this wall and this wall and I will also operate this and show you how logically this can operate. This is a R wall, symbolically it is shown like this. I have also mentioned this on the, uh, during the lecture sessions. I have shown you the symbol. So, R wall has two inputs and one output. So, now observe this, I will show the logical operation. You should be able to operate through this or through this. Now, I am taking the this. I am operating. If I give input, press this, it will move forward. If I press this, move forward and if I take out hand, it will go back. If you do not want this input to be given, so then I will move to this one. So, I press this one. So, this is how we can use any one of the input to give an output as per the requirement. This is a AND wall. Two input elements are there. From the distributor, I have taken to two input elements. This is port 1 of the input 1 and port 1 of the input 2. And the outputs of this is taken to the unlogical valve as an input. 
these are the two inputs to unlogical one. So, uh, as per the unlogic operation, in order to get an output here, I have to press both of them together. That means, press simultaneously both 1 and 2, A and B. So, then only I get an output here and the pilot signal will go to this pilot operated valve, single pilot operated valve and this will move forward and retraction will happen automatically because the spring on this side will take care of the return motion of this cylinder. Now, we will observe, I will start with 1, if I press A, I should not get a output, if I press A, I should not get this output, observe, no output or if I press B, input element B, then also I should not get the output, see, no output. But if I press both simultaneously, you will get an output. Now, observe this, I am taking my both the hands and putting it on the both the input elements. If I press it simultaneously both this, you can see now, cylinder is forwarded. Can you observe this now? Just I am pressing both A and B, both the inputs. See here my forefinger, you can observe my forefinger. I am using both here, one for this input and the another one for this input. I am pressing both, you can see the output has come. After understanding logical operations using R and and valves, we have taken some of the uh, examples which were related to sequencing and I have also told you what is sequencing, means here in this case more than one cylinder will be there, two or more cylinders can be there, which uh, are being built in particular sequences for operations. For example, I will quote one example, you, you are keeping an object on the fixture and clamping it, means after placing you are clamping it and then you are drilling it using a drilling spindle or drilling machine. Here one motion is this, first is clamping that is a horizontal motion that we need to take, this is the horizontal motion we need one cylinder for this and to have a downward motion, we need to have a second cylinder. So, more than one cylinder we have used. So, like clamping and drilling, clamping and riveting, so many such applications for under these kinds of sequencing operations. In the sequence of sequencing operation, I have told you about A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. That means, Cylinder A will move forward and retract and then cylinder B will move and retract. For example, pushing a material onto the another conveyor or diverting the material. In such cases, you are pushing it and taking it back and then the other cylinder will push that to the down the rollers. So, means diverting applications or lifting and shifting kinds of application we can have some sequences like that. And other application is A plus, A plus, B plus, that means clamping the object and then making the drill to happen, and B minus and then A minus. So, means I can change my sequence according to the application requirement. I am not showing all the cases here. I will show one such sequencing operation rigged on the test board. So, in this I have taken sequence A plus, A minus and then B plus, B minus. So, lifting, lifting and putting it on a conveyor table and then shifting and moving the material on to the other side. So, lifting and shifting application. where a plus, A minus. So, we have moved the material to the next table and then we are pushing that using the second cylinder, cylinder B 
and moving back. So, means a plus a minus b plus b minus. So, this is the sequence. So, to have that I have taken two cylinders now, two double acting cylinders with 100 mm stroke each. Observe here, this is the distributor, we have taken input from the compressor line and we have uh, taken uh, the outputs of this distributor as an input to these valves and the roller limit switches which are fixed in the cylinder line. Here as I told you sequencing is more than one cylinder, we have cylinder A and cylinder B to which we have made all our connection. When you compared with other previous circuits, this is bit complex because more than one cylinder operation is there here. So, you need to sequentially connect the output of this to the subsequent signal lines. So, once you complete all this circuit like this, so we can observe now upon pressing this input element, your cylinder starts moving. First cylinder A will move forward and the signal of this roller limit switch after it hits this will be taken to the second cylinder and that will start moving forward and then retract. So, cylinder A moves forward and retract and that signal will be captured by the cylinder B and moves forward and retract. A plus A minus B plus B minus. Observe now, I am going to press this input element. See this operation A is going forward and hitting this and signal of that we have taken to this, this moves and hits this, they are sequentially now operating. It is a wonderful circuit demonstrating A plus A minus B plus B minus. Similarly, we can incorporate different sequential operations. Now, I will tell you the one more application as I told you the clamping and drilling kinds of thing in which A plus, B plus, B minus uh, and then A minus. So, like this the second sequence you can observe that now just A plus see this now. So, a will go and hit this, then B will move forward, B will return and then A will return. See this? See the sequence? This will go, then this will come forward, hits this and goes back and then this will go back. Can you observe this? This gets written. Okay? Like this, you can create any sequence of your interest, taking the components on the test rig and uh, following the uh, teaching that what we have done uh, in different sequencing operations. You can take any number of such uh, applications with different sequence and try. In the lecture sessions, we have uh, also told you about uh, timing operations. So, I will relate that now for an application. Suppose if you are cleaning some components, washers or nuts and any other small parts of the uh, products. So, normally the industry uh, dips it in a chemical so that degreasing will happen. So, all the greases or oils which are sticked on to the surface of the parts has to be cleaned thoroughly. In this process, they will take the components in a basket and dip it in a uh, chemical container where the chemical will remove all the oil and, and the uh, in some cases burring, deburring also. So, rem remove the burrs and other things. So, in such a cases, the component basket will be moved down to the chemical bath and in the chemical bath it has to kept for a some time. Maybe uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes uh, with a uh, hot water and chemical reaction in it. So, in such a cases, the cylinder which is moved has to remain there for that many set time. So, 10 or 15 seconds 
or minute, whatever it is. These kinds of application is also possible in the pneumatics. Here exclusively we have a pneumatic components to do that. So that is being showed here. So if you observe that now, the symbol is here, it is tested here on the valve and such valve will have a knob to it. You can turn this knob to set the time, to set your particular time requirement, we have to adjust this knob. And the connections I have already uh, shown in the theoretical lecture session. It will have a A one line which is taken to the memory valve and from here we take the uh, input. So the complete as per the connection I have shown in the classroom, you have to rig that connection on the board and then operate this by giving an input signal here in the input valve. Here input valve is again 3 by 2 normally closed type of valve which is taken through the uh, other control elements and logical elements which are there in the circuit part. Now we will observe how the timing can be controlled and I am opening this valve. My circuit is now ready to operate. If I press this valve, it will remain in that condition for the setting time. Just observe this. We have to wait till that time reaches. Again I am doing it. I am taking my hand. It is reaching. Now I will give a half turn. I will give only half turn or one turn now. Time is increased now. I will repeat again. The cylinder is staying in forward condition for a particular amount of time. These kinds of timer based applications are also being used in many industries. If you are capable of handling all these logical and time based uh, low cost automation concepts, you can improve your organization and outputs can be improved, efficiency of the machines can be improved, operators fatigue can be reduced. So all these benefits uh, will lead to a better industry environment and that also enables you to grow in the respective industries rapidly. Especially to learn automation concepts, it starts from basic pneumatic and then moves to electro pneumatic and then to PLC pneumatic like this. If you learn the thoroughly all these areas, I always say there is a lot of requirements of jobs in these areas, but however, 50 percent or 30 percent learning will not serve the industry. So, you have to learn completely. So, in that uh, keeping that in mind, we have covered electro pneumatics also. Rather I suggest you should also cover PLC pneumatic, but not in your syllabus. So, hence we suggest you to come to the lab and learn those. However, I will demonstrate one of the electro pneumatic experiment on the test bench. When we say electro pneumatics, here the signal valves are different. We will be using the electro pneumatic valves which are operated by solenoids here. These are solenoid operated valves. The valve here is 5 by 2 a solenoid operated valve, solenoid on. So that means when an energy is given to this, this will hold this, this side and you will have a forward and if you take out this signal and give this signal, it will energize this and move the spool here and air will flow to this side and it retracts. So the, one of the major change here is instead of conventional pneumatic valves, we use a electro pneumatic components here. When you use a electro pneumatic component, you should also power up that. So that will have a, a, a series of electrical items. So one by one I will explain. So we use this board as a distributor board. When I say distributor, you, are, you already know the concept of distribution. So one input should be brought to this and you can get a multiple lines from that. 
So similarly, I have taken one such board, distributor board, and the next board is, which is an input board, which has a push buttons in it and also a toggle switch. So this is the switching elements are there in this board. And I take the one more similar input box with uh, two push buttons and one toggle. I use one input here, one input here. So these two are input giving elements. Either you can use a push button type or a toggle type. So depending upon your requirement. For automation, we normally use a push button type because we give a momentary signal to the component. The rest other we logically build it. So we have used a two such boards and also we have used a, a relay box. If, if you observe this and this, there is a small difference here. A is written here, A1 is written, A2 is written here. That means a coil is there. The relay here is you are supplying the current to the coil here. In turn, you know the concept of this. I will uh, tell the concepts of this relay. When you pass a current to the coil which is wounded onto a core, so you are building up an electromagnetic force in it. And that force will move the uh, lever and that lever will close some of the switch and open some of the switches which are connected to it. Means a relay is an electromagnetic switch which is being operated by sending a current to the coil, solenoid coil, which is kept at the bottom side of that relay. So when, when that happens, this switch gets automatically closes and opens. NO will close, NO will become NC, NC will become NO. Whatever the requirement, Either you can use NO or you can NC. To break, you can use NC. To make, you have to use a NO. So now we have used two NO connections from two relays like this. So and we have taken the input to the distributor and from there we have rigged on to the circuits. To learn this, you have to come to the laboratory or you have to take uh, the, my lecture session and follow that along with this sequence uh, and use the boards to build that circuit. So now I will show you how this uh, operation can be done using an electro pneumatic circuit. I am opening the air supply, you can see the dial here, it is giving complete pressure now. Now if I operate this, I can make forward, it will remain in forward because one side of the solenoid is energized, till you give a supply to the other side, it will remain in that condition, it holds in that condition. So if you want to reset that, now I use this to reset. So means forward, hold the forward till the time you want and when you want to reset, press the other. See how easy it is to control now. By pressing a push button, you are able to get your operation requirements, forward or reverse. So to get the reverse, I press this, to get the forward, I will press this. So like this, you can use the electronic, uh, uh, electrical boards to build your circuit sequence and use this for any such kinds of application. This is a very important area to learn electro pneumatic components. If you are good with electro pneumatic, then we can move on to PLC pneumatic concepts, wherein through a software we give a command. Sequentially, we can take you from basic pneumatics to a PLC pneumatic, where you can program and learn the things. So we conduct regular trainings to those uh, advanced areas at VTOBR. Please visit us. With this, I will uh, end my lecture sessions of the laboratory sessions of the day. Here we have demonstrated you the basic pneumatic starting from direct and indirect circuit and then to a logical element using AND and R uh, to create a logics for you 
and then we have moved on to a sequencing operation where we have showed you two cylinder sequencing that is for a two different applications that is a plus a minus b plus b minus and then next we have showed you a plus b plus b minus a minus operation and then we have also showed you the timing applications where timers are being incorporated in the circuit to set forward and remain in forward for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 1 minute, whatever the time that you are in required. So, and lastly, I have demonstrated one circuit with electronemadic concept also. So, with this, I end my laboratory lecture session for the day and this enables you to understand the complete operation of pneumatics from basic to advanced level. Thank you. Uh, thanks for attending the lecture session on eShikshana program conducted by VTU eLearning Center. Please visit VTU Bosch Center which is in the Mysore region which has a very good uh, different laboratories for you to learn. We have a PLC lab, we have a census lab, we have a hydraulics lab, we have a pneumatics lab. So, learn all these tools before you go to industries. Now, NEP being implemented across uh, all the institutions, it is necessary that you acquire a required skill and those skills can be given by us at VTU Bosch Center. Please visit. In collaboration, we can also take you to robotic examples with the NIE where I work as a professor and we will give you everything whatever you want in the Mysore region. Thank you.